shani pare na la rabri do so makata shanari na le bakato shemetia so this week we are learning about the god of vengeance the god of weapon of mass destruction the bible calls them instruments of death instruments the book of psalms chapter 7 sit down the book of psalms chapter 7 psalms chapter 7 from verse 9 adibali sando prakeda so makada seka somebody is in trouble today no you must learn whom you can joke with and you must learn whom you must uh, leave their business alone. Yes. Psalm chapter 7 verse 9 says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Let the wickedness of the wicked I want you to participate with me. Let the wickedness of the wicked let it come to an end. But establish the just for the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. Verse 10. My defense is of God. My defense is of God. Who saves? Who saves? The upright in heart. Verse 11. God is a just judge. And God is angry with the wicked every day. There's no day passes when God is now happy with the wicked. God is angry with the wicked every day. If he does not turn back, if this wicked person does not turn back, he will sharpen his sword. Can I have KJV? If he does not, if he turn not, he will wet his sword. He has bent his bow and made it ready. Verse 13. He has also prepared for him, what? What? God has intercontinental ballistic missiles, weapons of mass destruction, that God has prepared for the wicked people. Tonight we are putting in the codes for the nuclear we are putting in the nuclear codes. We are launching something. We are launching something. And that thing will not, meet, will not miss its target. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say God of vengeance. Listen. God... The word vengeance does not mean revenge. The word vengeance does not mean revenge. I have to qualify some statements, otherwise people will attack me. The word vengeance does not mean revenge. The word vengeance is God's punishment for sin, because, for sin and wickedness. God's punishment for evil and wickedness because of his love for justice. God's punishment for wickedness and evil because of God's love for justice. Because of God's love for justice. God loves justice. Because God loves justice, God must punish wickedness. Are you listening? God must punish? If God doesn't punish wickedness, God will lose his throne. Because the Bible says justice and righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. So God's throne is founded on righteousness and justice. So the justice of God must be met. God cannot look at wickedness and injustice and keep quiet and also keep his throne. Because the foundation of the throne of God is justice and righteousness. Psalm 89 verse 14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. So God cannot watch wickedness thriving and keep quiet. 
yet retain his throne. His throne is made up on the foundation of righteousness and justice. It means wickedness must be punished and must be punished severely. Because wickedness is an affront, is an insult, is a mockery of the throne of God. Say I hear. Say I hear. Say I hear. God must come to the aid of the righteous. He must come to the aid of the righteous. And he must do it now. And he must do it now. <clears throat> Why do we call upon the vengeance of God? We call upon the vengeance of God. Okay, listen. Listen, I'm on this I taught on Wednesday that Jesus read the scripture from the book of um, Luke chapter 4 from va uh, on verse 19. He says, the spirit of God is upon me and among the things that Jesus listed that the spirit of God had anointed him to do, the last one was to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Was to do what? Okay, respond faster so I can teach faster so I can get into action. To, to do what? To, to do what? Luke 4, 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus reading. Why? Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, Verse 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The next one says, then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. So Jesus ended his mission at proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. But if you check where Jesus was reading from, this was not a full stop. Jesus stopped in the middle of the sentence. He was reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. If you see, verse 1 says, The Spirit of God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound... To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, comma, this is where Jesus stopped. That means that's where the mission of Jesus ended. Then Jesus died and resurrected and sent to us the Holy Spirit. And the mission of the Holy Spirit began where the mission of Jesus ended. The mission of the Holy Ghost began where? The mission of Jesus ended. Where did it end? And the day of vengeance of our God. How do we know this is the mission of the Holy Spirit? Because he says to comfort all those who mourn. Who is the Holy Spirit? The comforter. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 14, I will send you another comforter who will now come and comfort. And the instrumentality of that comfort is the day of vengeance of our God. I proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. Until vengeance is executed, wickedness continues. The freedom is never handed out. It is never given. Freedom is always taken. Freedom, there's no day. The oppressor will sit down and 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 Cancel with himself and say, I have oppressed this person long enough. Let me now grant them their freedom. It will never happen. The oppressor will continue oppressing until the oppressed finds an instrument that hurts the oppressor and then the oppressor will say, it is too hot. Let him go. Am I talking? Yes. Until freedom is taken, oppression continues. Freedom are never handed out in silver platter. Freedom is fought for and got by force. Today you are going free for free. You are going free for free. You are going free by force. By fire, by the Holy Ghost.
freedom is coming to you in the name of Jesus to comfort John 14:26 says but the comforter who is the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things what is the comforter teaching how to do vengeance that's what he said, to proclaim the day of vengeance of our God. The scripture which we're using for today, it says, the day of vengeance of our God is come and he will save you. He says, he will release fire unto your enemies, but he will save you. Isaiah 35 verse 4. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with? He will come with? With the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Until vengeance is executed, oppression will continue. Tonight, the wickedness of the wicked comes to an end. I said the wickedness of the wicked comes to an end. The wickedness of the wicked comes to an end tonight. In the precious name of Jesus. Isaiah 63 says, The day of vengeance was in my heart. And the day of the redeemed, the year of the redeemed had come. Your year will not come until the vengeance of God is executed. See, the day of vengeance was in my heart, says the Lord, and the year of the redeemed had come. The redeemed will not come forth until the enemy has been silenced. I silence every enemy speaking over your life. You see, you see there must come an end. You cannot suffer forever. Listen. If this situation continues like this, it will expire now. You cannot be doing this day in, day out, borrowing Tala to pay Fuliza, borrowing Fuliza to pay branches, borrowing branches to pay where. This cannot be the life you're living. There must at one point come an end. And that end is today. That end is today. That end is today. In the name of Jesus. You cannot be. No. At one point you must say, no, I refuse. There's a God in heaven. And he's also my God. And he also died for me. I'm also a child of God. What other children of God are enjoying, I also want. Whatever it takes to get it, I am getting it. I am not a lesser child of God. I am not a borrowed child of God. I am not a stepchild of God. God is not my uncle, he's my father. Whatever he's giving his other children, I also qualify by the same blood. Every demon in my life, every spirit in my life, we don't have a dead God. We serve the living Jehovah. He has never failed a battle. And he's not starting with your case. Your freedom is coming today. In Jesus' name. You cannot serve God, serve God, serve God, and people are mocking you. Mocking you. Mocking you. As if the God you are serving is dead. Listen. Isaiah 63 verse 4. The day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of the redeemed has come. Say, I'm the redeemed. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say, I am redeemed. My year has come. This is my year. Therefore, vengeance has to be executed. Say, Lord God Jehovah, follow your heart. Release vengeance upon my enemies. Let visit the enemies camp with vengeance. In the name of Jesus. So God says, if you had the ear of the redeemed has come, it's because vengeance is in my heart. 